De Quervin tenosynovitis is the topic. And this uh, condition involves tendons of two muscles. And those two muscles are the extensor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis longus. And these two muscles have associated tendons, and those tendons are labeled in this diagram. And they are involved in thumb motion. So as you can deduce, uh, this condition in involves the restriction or, or uh, lack of uh, thumb motion. Now what's important to remember is that these tendons are covered by a sheath. And that sheath, or synovium, essentially uh, makes an oily fluid that helps the tendons move freely. So what happens in tenosynovitis is that that sheath becomes inflamed. So you have inflammation of that sheath. And the sheath, of course, is the surrounding the tendons. Now, that will cause uh, pain and, and restriction of uh, motion. So why does this happen? What is the reason somebody will develop this condition? Well, some sort of trauma can cause this, but more commonly, repetitive use. Repetitive use will lead to um, thickening of those tendons. And when that happens, that can prevent the proper gliding of those tendons through the sheath. What are some of the symptoms uh, of uh, this tenosynovitis? A decreased range of motion. And then you also will have this characteristic aching pain that the patient will describe. And then there will be visible swelling and tenderness to palpation. Now, how do you diagnose this? Well, fortunately, there's a very uh, good physical exam, and it's known as the Finkelstein. What you do is you cover the thumb with your fingers. This is the thumb, and you've covered it with your fingers. And they have the tendons that go along here. Now, what you do is you have to passively deviate the wrist. So as you can see, you, you deviated and then stretched out that tendon. First thing that you did was you adducted the thumb into the palm, right? So the thumb is kind of hiding in here, this area, this is the thumb. And then you wrap the fingers around it. And then once you wrap the fingers around the thumb, you passively deviated the wrist. It's ulnar deviation. And when you do that, it provokes pain in the tendons that are affected. So that's the Finkelstein test. Treatment. Majority of cases, 70 to 80% respond favorably to a corticosteroid injection. And also a thumb cast, a splint, uh, known as a thumb spica splint. It's not, a, it's not actually a, a cast. It's just a splint that you can buy and wear and helps uh, relieve some of the pressure. So let's uh, take a look at some vignettes. A young mother complains of pain along the radial side of her wrist and the first dorsal compartment. She relates the pain is often caused by position of wrist flexion and simultaneous thumb extension as she assumes to carry the head of her baby. On physical exam, the pain is reproduced by asking her to hold the thumb inside her closed fist and then forcing the wrist into ulnar deviation. What's the most likely uh, diagnosis? Well, they just essentially asked her to do the Finkelstein test. Just a very basic uh, physical exam um, maneuver. And the pain was reproduced. And looks like she just had a baby and has been holding her baby a lot, so that might have been the reason that uh, this inflammation started occurring. So, tenosynovitis of the extensor thumbs 
uh, tendons of the thumb, also known as decorvans tenosynovitis. So the answer is E. And the last one, 32-year-old secretary complains of wrist pain at rest when holding a pen. She said it feels like her thumb is locking up all the time. On exam, you notice tenderness on the radial side of her right wrist. A radiograph shows multiple sesamoid bones around her first metacarpophalangeal joint. You suspect. Well, she's a secretary, so most likely she's doing a lot of typing, or, and that's a repetitive uh, use uh, involving the wrist. And then she's complaining of tenderness right along the area of those tendons. And uh, that most likely, uh, you suspect, is going to be de Quervin's tenosynovitis. This is just another patient presentation. And that would be choice C.